We have got five title fights announced for 1166 on March 1st. The promotions return to Qatar. We knew it would be a big event. We got told there would be five title fights on this card. And now we have those five title fights here. I thought we should talk about them. Um, I have already spoken about two of these fights in a previous video when they were announced. Um, but, you know, I haven't mentioned the other three. Two of them were only announced today at the time of recording this video. It'll be tomorrow by the time, uh, well, yesterday, by the time that you're watching it that they were announced. That confused me for a second but you know we got there um so yeah exciting things for this card um it, it feels strange to be talking about this card and how how big it is when you've got a 1165 right around the corner this japan card that is absolutely huge and loads of great fights on that card um i will have a preview for that event so so subscribe so you don't miss that and, and check it out when it drops uh on fight week um but anyway we are here to talk about 1166 at blue sale sports arena on march 1st main evented by the one middleweight world championship fight between Anatoly Malikin and Renier de Ridder. Um, a rematch, of course. I have spoken about this fight when it was announced. I gave my reaction. You can check that out on this very channel um, where I spoke about how, you know, Malikin has the chance to make history um, as a three-weight world champion. He, of course, currently holds the heavyweight and light heavyweight titles. Um, he took that light heavyweight title off of Renio de Ridder at the end of 2022. De Ridder hasn't fought since then. Um, he obviously still holds the middleweight title, and uh, he will be defending that in a rematch with Malikin, where I think that the the biggest question is whether Malikin can make the weight safely, and if he can, I would pick him as a favourite against Renio de Ridder, which is crazy because he could make history in one championship and in... A major organization by being a three-weight world champion um and also has done it in pretty quick fashion and i don't want to say with relative ease because he's fought some tough opponents but his performances have been absolutely dominant right like even the one against Arjan Buller last year where he won the heavyweight title he was interim champion at the time and unified the belt it went I think third round maybe was it that it went to, but it was absolutely one-sided traffic um, against Bula, like a lot of people thought it would be. Um, and so that is your main event, you know, two of the biggest names in the promotion competing, again, history on the line, all of that. A rematch where the first fight wasn't close. Um, and I think this is a really dangerous fight for RDR. I really do. Um, and yeah, we'll see how that one works out. I heard good things so far coming out of Malikin's camp about him making weight so that doesn't seem to be too much of a, uh, a worry for them which is crazy considering he last fought a heavyweight and now he's going to try and make middleweight and not only make middleweight make it hydrated um that is a, a big ask I think but yeah everything seems to be going according to plan for them You've also on this card got another rematch, Jared Brooks versus Joshua Passio for the strawweight title. Um, again, already spoken briefly about this one. It was the clear fight to make. This is a rematch from 1164, also at the end of 2022, where Jared Brooks dethroned Passio to win the strawweight crown. Um, unbeaten since arriving in one championship, Jared Brooks, I believe it's four fights. He is one, I know that he had the submission grappling match against Muzumechi that he lost, but unbeaten in MMA, I should say, I guess. Um, Pasio rebounded last year with that win over Mansur Malachiev at one fight night at 15 that I thought was very, very impressive. It was a close fight um, at points. It wasn't like, you know, a barn burner performance from, from Pasio, the former champion, but I thought Malachiev was probably going to be the guy to face Brooks. So um, stopping him and, and I believe stopping his undefeated record as well um, was impressive from the man that they call the Passion. And uh, and he will be back to, to, to face Brooks. We've known about this fight for a long time. We've known that, uh, I believe Chatri said at the end of last year that this was probably going to happen in Qatar. So expected this one. Makes sense. Um, yeah, good fight. Um some strawweight matchups coming up soon that, that maybe we'll see who who is next. But um, with Pasio beating Malachiev, I, I, I honestly am not too sure as of right now because Brooks has beaten a lot of the other top guys as well. So uh, we will see how this all plays out um, in the next couple of weeks slash months. Um, probably the one I am most looking forward to. I, I say most looking forward to. I'm very, very uh, excited to see Malikin and, and Renio de Ritter run that fight back. But in terms of what I think the best fight will probably be, um, I would look towards the lightweight title. Lightweight? Featherweight title. My apologies. 
The champion Tang Kai taking on the interim champion Tan Lee. Another rematch. Um, this is a rematch from their fight in August of 2022 at 1160. Um, they were supposed to do the rematch last year at One Fight Night 15. Was it scheduled for? It was scheduled uh, a couple of times, I think. Um, and Tang Kai had an injury that kept him out. So instead, Tan Lee fought for the interim title against Ilya Freemanov and got a submission that I did not see come in. Um, so that was really, really impressive, I think, to showcase uh, a little bit of his his overall game um because we haven't seen it from him frankly Tanley, of course known as a very very exciting and dangerous striker and in that first fight with tang kai the the chinese champion just shut him down he had a a game plan that didn't make for a very entertaining fight um in some respects i thought it was entertaining because of the way that their styles matched up and you know trying to see how tan lee would adapt to Tankai's game plan but it was you know he completely nullified the champion at the time so um you have to give him credit for that um i do think he's a very very good fighter so i'm excited i'm really really excited to see actually what adjustments both of these guys make in the rematch because Tankai will probably try and come out with a similar game plan and just shut tan lee down but you know, Tanley's done it now. He kind of knows what to expect. Um, I would lean towards the champion Tang Kai slightly, just because I think that he was so calculated and so he didn't deviate from the game plan much. I know he did get caught with some big shots by Tanley, um, which you would expect over the course of a 25 minute fight. Um, because he is so creative he's probably going to get you with something at some point but yeah be interesting to see how Tan Lee adapts to that um and, and goes in knowing that uh the champion is just going to try and stifle him so um yeah very very excited for that rematch and then you have the two matchups that were announced today at the time of recording this video you've got Stamp Fairtex defending her Atomweight title I did not see this fight coming um I, I maybe could have predicted that this matchup would be the one we would get. I didn't expect to see Stamp out this quickly. I say this quickly. This point in the year. Um, not necessarily that it's a super quick turnaround. She, of course, won the Atomweight title at One Fight Night 14 in September, where she stopped Ham Seo Hee. Um, but I just didn't... Yeah, I, I didn't expect it. And also, I didn't expect it to be on a card like this, where she isn't one of the top... Um, I mean, maybe this will get reshuffled, but at the moment on One Championship, um, she is the second fight the second title fight. Uh, there are three above her, those being the three I've already spoken about, of course. So that's surprising, I think. I would have thought that Stamp would have been headlining a card somewhere, maybe back to Singapore, um, something like that. Um, but yeah, uh, she's going to be on this card and she's going to be facing... Uh, her first title defense will be against Denise Zamboanga. They are, of course, former teammates, as uh, some of you will know, uh, and very, very good uh, friends and close teammates. However, they have spoken about this fight for the best part of like a year at this point um because De uh, denise has kind of established herself as the top contender um stamp was kind of like has brushed it off in the past and been like well go and beat hamsu here and then we'll talk about it which that fight hasn't happened but um you know i think that, that I, th I don't think she necessarily needed to do that personally um i think this fight makes a lot of sense um Zambo Anger, back-to-back wins over Lin Hekin and Julie Mezzabarba, um, who I believe Stamp beat as well, right, Julie Mezzabarba? No, I, I, I'm getting her confused with... Um, who was the American that she beat at One Fight Night 10 in Colorado? Uh, the name's gone from my head. But either way, um, I thought Denise um, looked fantastic against Lin Hekin. Her striking, her boxing looked the best it's ever been by far. Um, so, and I think that you could probably credit, um, the, her work that she did with Stamp, um, a, as part of the reason why her striking has come on so much. So I'm, I'm very, very excited about that fight. Um, I think it's very good and it'd be interesting to see how they are very good friends and they have kind of gone back and forth, but, um, they never said that they wouldn't fight each other. They've been very open about the fact that they would. So... We'll see how that plays out. Uh, we'll see how the dynamic is. I'm uh, just very, very interested to see what happens there. Um, I can't remember two people being like so happy to... Well, not happy to fight each other, but being so open to the idea, despite the fact that they are good friends. But um, yeah, we'll see. Um, and then finally, the, the first title fight on the main card at the moment is a submission grappling contest. You've got Tyra Tolo defending his welterweight submission grappling world championship for the first time. He, of course, won the inaugural title um, towards the end of last year. 
and he will be facing Isaac Mitchell, um, an American competitor who I did have to do a little bit of research on, to be honest. His name didn't uh, jump into my mind as somebody that I've, I've has come up on my radar before. Um, but as soon as I did search his name, I was like, oh, it's that guy, um, because Ty did call him out um, when he won the title. And so... I looked into him then and was like, okay, let's see what this guy's all about because he was one of the names that Ty mentioned as a title challenger um, that he would look to face in the near future. A um, little bit of background on Isaac Mitchell from what I know. Um, he is a 2021 IBJJF world champion at Brown Belt. Obviously, quite a few years have passed since then, so um, hard to take that too much into account but uh from what i understand from the reaction i've seen to this contest people seem to be quite happy with this opponent i also know that mitchell competed at polaris 25 um i was keeping an eye on that event because it did happen over in the uk and uh they had a tournament format and he was eliminated in the semi-finals by the guy who went on to win the whole thing so um you know again there's not a whole lot you can take from that, I don't think, because the guy that won, I believe, is an ADCC winner. Um, and so he was kind of the favorite going in, I think, um, from the impression I've got. Again, not super well versed in the submission grappling game. This is just my impression. Um, but, you know, I think that's important because a lot of fans tuning in will also not know this. And so I can share, you know, kind of the basic stuff that you should know as someone going in who doesn't follow submission grappling super closely. Um, yeah, from, from what I can see, good opponent um the fact that ty was calling him out um means that you know even if people go oh, it's a mismatch ty is so much better ty asked for this contest you know he he identified isaac mitchell as a guy that um was deserving of this shot and uh, and wanted to test himself against him so i think that this matchup makes a lot of sense um we will see how it plays out on fight night but i think these five title fights are very very good um very good indeed i i would the, one of the things that I kind of noticed um, initially was that none of these are a striking title fight, which surprised me. You know, you would imagine that if you get five title fights on a one card that they're going to have submission grappling, Muay Thai, kickboxing and MMA. Maybe, you know, one title fight from each um, and then another one. But um, but no, no striking world championships. Um, on this card which is interesting I think um, it's also a very good sign if you were worried about the state of MMA in one championship you know the fact that they've got four world title fights on this card and four of them are in MMA and you know admittedly three of them are rematches right that is something that we should address but they are rematches I think that have needed to happen for quite a while these aren't rematches that have come out of nowhere or rematches that you go oh, really these are rematches that have been building for a while these are rematches that make sense as the next fight for both the champion and the challenger or the interim champion in uh, in one case um, so I, I think that this is progress honestly it feels like things are starting to move gears are starting to turn and we are starting to get somewhere with these divisions um after a little bit of a strange period in 2023 so um I i'm optimistic about this card i'm looking forward to it uh we of course do have two other fights currently announced you've got the former heavyweight champion arjan Buller back in action against mira ali akbari didn't expect to see that fight made honestly i didn't think we would see Buller again in one championship to be honest i wonder if this is to fight out of his deal or something like that um but you know a legitimate probably a heavyweight number one contenders contest that division isn't super active Ali Bari, I thought would have got the shot at Malakin um with a win over Buller he definitely will get the shot at Malakin next so but then does Malakin win the middleweight title and then go back up to heavyweight I don't know we'll find these questions out on fight night and you also have a submission grappling contest between um uh Alma White and uh and Clever Souza so those are the seven fights we've got announced for the card. Like I said, looking forward to it. Optimistic. I think these fights are pretty good. Uh, let me know in the comments below which fight you think is the best of these matchups. Picks, of course. Um, and like I said, stay tuned for the preview for the Japan card. I might do another video on that Japan card. Um, I don't know. I think of something. But, you know, let me know if you want to see that. Drop a like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I will see you for the preview of 1165 very, very soon. See you later.